questions and answers. But I want to do it differently. Those of you who have preached since yesterday, those of you who have left seminars, workshops, discussions, and so on. As I went around, I had a lot of things. Um, but I can't hear everything. So, if you have a question arising from yesterday, or something, a subject that has not been dealt with, or thirdly, a matter that arose as a result of experience. Or number four, if you have uh, uh, a question arising from the discussion sessions and the interaction sections, then just hand your question if you don't want to talk uh, to an usher who will bring it here to the podium. Uh, those of us who have preached, and those of us who have led workshops and seminars, uh, we will call you forward to answer those questions. If there are things I feel that need to be made perfect, then I might speak on it. So that will not extend our time. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Uh, if you have a question, let's raise up a hand. Or maybe you have written. At least the ushers, I want to go around and collect. 
you want to ask on the mic, let me see your hands. Don't let's be Africans. Africans don't ask questions, and it does not help. And Africans don't talk, don't read. It doesn't help. From this side, any question? Okay, you are trying to write. You can write. Please let's be fast about writing. Want to write? If you have written, please you can raise up your hand so that we can collect. Ah, with all the volumes you have. Praise the Lord. Any other question? Okay, bring it. The mic. Okay. I have three questions here already. Uh, question number one. Um, where can a single lady get cancer from? Because some pastors can start telling your secret. Where can a single lady get cancer from? Because your, some pastor can start telling your secret. So I want to invite Pastor where can a single lady get cancer from because some pastor can start telling your secret? Okay. Well, I, 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 even though I wasn't the one that taught the class, uh, that question is so mal because as Christian who has a pastor who is credible who what is sought I will recommend that a single sister in the church to approach the pastor for counseling or the marriage counselor in the church. The church is the answer because the pastor will counsel according to the mind of God as written in the Bible. Outside cannot be better. Outside the church cannot be better than inside the church. And I don't know the kind of secret that a single lady who is waiting for the will of God in marriage, I don't know the, the secret. And I want to say this, minister by the grace of God, <laughs> the they have gotten so much in the course of ministry. And uh, there is only a thing that a young lady of 17 or 20 or 25 or 27 will tell a man who has been ministering for 25 years, will say, ah, I've never had it before. 
I don't think there shall be, there can be sought. To me, the church is still the answer. Because going outside the counselors, they will cancel you according to books. And like I mentioned yesterday, no theory, no philosophies, no idea of men can counteract the word of God. I think I want to stop there. Thank you, sir. And number two, can your leader do matchmaking and tell you a lady uh, or the man has money? I think uh, we don't need to waste time on this. No. Um, pastor cannot do matchmaking. No. Pastor cannot do matchmaking. And we don't do that in full stature. So don't let us waste time on that. Um, what caused conflict in marriage? I think this person didn't attend the message yesterday. I want to call on Pastor Lushola. What caused uh, conflict in marriage? What causes conflict in marriage? Yes. Praise God. Well, I told you, if you were here yesterday, it's a normal thing. I mean, because of your living closely together, you will bump into one another as a result of difference, your background, and your outlook in life, and what was whatsoever. Um, I, know, I remember even in a church setting, somebody who was preaching the Bible and was on top of it, and he will come to the pulpit because of his background, and he said, I don't know why, you, why, why are you wearing perfume? Are you a dead person? But when he himself got to the junction to wear perfume, he did what? He wore one. <laughs> Do you understand? It's as a result of background. So the same thing can happen between a wife and the husband. You know, the man is widely traveled, and both of them got born again. They have the grace of God. The woman grew up in... Um, um, from one local area, but by reason of intelligence, went to school, got a degree, and they met in the campus, and they married. And this man's outlook is different from that woman's outlook. The way that we see things differ in life. So, certainly, there will be conflict in relationship between husband and wife, between wife and the husband, between parents and children, and so on and so forth. But there are ways out of conflict. And the best way is to be in the church, you nurture yourself in the word of God. And when you nurture yourself in the word of God, you attend regularly such conferences like this that we organize. Because yesterday, if you are in the church to listen to that message, yesterday, you will know the reason why there are conflicts. And you will know the way out for conflict. Because that's what we dealt with yesterday. But within the space of time that I have now, I can't go into that. So if you want to know more, you wait and try to see uh, us after the service. God bless you. Okay, praise the Lord. So please, um, like I said before, there has to be a follow-up. Um, the workshop leaders... Seminar leaders, it has need for you to see them. Um, and this person, um, you can see the man of God after the service. Now, my husband loved to rear dog, but I do not like such pets. We are fought, talk about it, but do not change. <laughs> I'm just trying to cope with the situation. Please, sir, I cannot solve it. Let, let me call Pastor Makede, he has a dog. So come and answer, sir. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Uh, I think when I was, uh, when we were growing up, when we were younger, none of us in the family, with the exception of, my, of myself, loved dog. So I could not raise one. Because even my children, if they see dog in a book, some of them will run. So we could not rear one. But when everybody has left home, 
I was nursing the idea of um, rearing one. And um, I had an opportunity of rearing one, and somebody, is a junior brother of mine, actually gave me one. And uh, I told my wife about it. She thought maybe I was joking. But uh, by the time, because she wasn't around then, by the time she came back, she saw the dog. She didn't like it. She was running away from it. But I was trying to protect her and all those things. But today, the dog is one of our best friends in the house. One way or the other, I encourage her about it. And uh, there was a time the dog would want to chase her. But I protected her, and I told her, if you give, her food, give the dog food, you try to be friendly with the dog, the dog will be friendly with you. The dog is a very good pet and a very good friend. So now the dog is our friend. She still runs away from it, but the dog is no longer chasing her. So I think uh, that is what you can do. You try to encourage the people to feed and take care of the dog as well. Okay, it's another question. I'm not talking about he ate listening, especially for long. I, I love talking, but he hates listening, especially for long. Uh, I think this person also didn't attend the message on communication. Pastor Lurubi, can you? I think one of the highlights we gave yesterday in communication has to do with the ability, especially of the man, to listen. We must understand that women, by their made up, they are given to talking. I remember yesterday I said, we must learn to cope with our, their stories. I said stories. Sometimes <laughs> to us, what have I gone to do with, uh, uh, we attended to five uh, patients in the hospital, uh, somebody, but you see, because I know it's part of who they are, you listen. And uh, occasionally you acknowledge, mm, okay. Even when you don't have uh, <laughs> more to say, you don't ignore. We must learn it. Women love talking, but men should learn to listen and acknowledge them. I, I want to stop there. Yes. Praise the Lord. And I think also, okay. Yeah, praise God. Hallelujah. It is all of us that are faulty when it comes to that area. You can do it from now. Watch yourself. When you are discussing, do you allow the man to land before you want to say your own? Praise God. Every one of us, you want to be heard. You don't want to listen to another person. And that's why God has given us two ears and one mouth so that can, we can listen more than we do the talking. There is strength in listening. Even in counseling, all that a man may need is just he wants to express his mind. He's never been able to talk with somebody ever. By the time you give him one hour, but it's difficult for me as a pastor to listen to somebody. For one hour. All I want to do is just to counsel him and pray with him and let him go. But even if you allow him to speak all his mind, by that time the person may be healed before he leaves you. So it is all of us that we, you just watch yourself. It's a practical thing. The moment we get out of this church, out of this uh, assembly, when you are relating with somebody, watch whether you allow that person to finish his statement before you interrupt. You assume that you have already had it. So you want yourself to be hard. And so I'm praying that it goes beyond husband and wife. It goes even to 
approbation in life. There are some lawyers, that's their strength. In the court, they will just wait. While others' lawyers are talking, they are writing. They are writing. It's as you are talking that you are releasing the strength that he needs. So by the time he will stand up and he will put up his gab, he begin to say, yes, I put it to you. You said this, and you say, I didn't say it. Okay, what do you want to say? He allowed you to say, it. yes, you said this. And by the end of the time, the judge will have listened to him and he will win the case. So, and even in, in medicine, that's why doctors, that's why they do clacking. They want to listen to your story. By the time you finish telling your story, sometimes you have the confidence in this man that this man who listens to you very well is going to treat you very well. And psychologically, by the time he treats it, you get, okay. But if you just come to the doctor and you say, well, I have a headache, and he just write pyritine and something, he may be writing the right medication, but he didn't listen to you. So you have, we won't have trust in him. So he said, let me go and see another doctor who is better than this man, who didn't listen to what is my problem. But the man has experience. Actually, by the time you told him this, so he already knew what was happening. But you didn't allow him to speak. Somebody came to my office one day. He said, this man of God, I had this problem, so I wanted to see him by all means. So he said, I went to his camp one day. When I got to his camp, I asked, I learned that he was in that camp. So I said, I wanted to see him. They said, you can't see him. He said, I have to see him. They said, you can't see him. So I blocked the camp. So there was commotion. And eventually the man of God had in his room. So he said, they should bring him. So he said, when he got to the man of God, when the man of God saw him, he just said, let us pray. And the man just prayed. In Jesus' name, pa, 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 pa. He said, I got my, my problem solved. He said, but I don't have respect for that man of God. He said, because he didn't treat me as a human being. <laughs> you know, he didn't even allow me to talk. He just said, let us pray. And he prayed accurately what my problem was. And I got solution to my problem. Therefore, he, he didn't even allow me to open my mouth. He just dismissed me. He said, so I can't be in his church. Isn't true. And God will grant us the grace to be willing to listen in Jesus' name. Amen. Take, sir. Praise the Lord. Um, I think in this case, what I can just add is that um, God, this is a woman, said I love talking, but he hates listening. What I can say is that, you see, the time is important. Uh, if, for instance, a man goes to bank uh, to check his salary, and he goes to the bank, and the salary is not there, and he comes back home, and you are talking to him, he won't listen. He won't listen to you. He won't listen to you. So the timing is very, very important. Uh, praise the Lord. Amen. Um, many marriages are passing through the issues of integrity. So kindly help us elaborate more on this because I think it's affecting every area um, that is marriage. Okay. 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 Many marriages are passing through the issues of integrity. Uh, so I can't lay, I, I, I will like prof. Uh, Professor, Please, can you leave the question alone? I will handle it. Oh, all right, sir. In fact, I'm already putting some aside. Okay, this one. Uh, who owns all the home through family responsibilities? E.g. cooking, cares, provision. The two of you. Uh, will not waste time on that. It's the two of you. Amen. So, um, cooking, uh, cares. You see, the thing is that I, I believe that men also are also ready to work. But I see some sisters now making what the husband what the husband is contributing to now be his responsibility. For instance, the man fetches water for you and there, there's no water now. Ah. Come on, so me in lay. Come on, so me in lay. 
So the man may feel somehow. The man may feel somehow. But, but for me, I would say that it is both the man and the woman. Cooking, cares, provision, uh, it is both of you. Praise the Lord. Amen. Uh, let's take another one. What are the misconceptions about courtship? Uh, Sister Edith, I think you told this. Come on, answer. What are the misconceptions about uh, courtship? Okay, let me call Pastor Mrs. Cordy. Please come, man. You have uh, more experience. Please give her the mic. What are the misconceptions about courtship? Praise the Lord. Uh, some young couple, uh, uh, people believe that when I'm in courtship, it's like I'm married. I can hug, I can kiss, I can do so many things, we can even go to bed. But courtship is different from marriage. When you are in courtship, there are things uh, that are supposed to be in place like discussing your future, what about how many children, what about finance, what about this area, what are the other things that we enter into, praying together, discussing so many things like that. But courtship is not marriage, and courtship is not dating. In fact, a, a, a child of God should not date. There is nothing like dating in uh, any relationship. So the misconceptions that immediately courtship starts, then I can do everything, it shouldn't be. Thank you. Okay, praise the Lord. Uh, what do you do when you try to find out why your husband is passive and moody? And he says, leave me alone because you cannot help me. <laughs> that's, that's a question. The husband needs prayer. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Uh, in a situation where one of one of two partners is engaging or godly act in pretense as a child of God, can we still blame the innocent partner as engaging in a godly relationship? This question, I think, is not. Um, that question is not explicit enough. Now, who can you enter? Who can you enter? How can you enter an ungodly relationship? Stroke. Can godly person be in ungodly relationship? Praise the Lord. Uh, during our interactive session uh, on finance, I asked a question that, why was the scripture that says, and both of them are naked and they are not ashamed, find it difficult to fulfill even in the Christian home? Prof, I want you to answer this question. Do On finance, I asked a question that, why was the scripture that says, and both of them are naked and they are not ashamed? Uh, find it difficult to fulfill even in the Christian home. I, I think I have enough questions. Uh, please, we should not bring. Uh, I think this that person is just asking about um, anyway, openness. Um, the concept of both of them were naked and they were not ashamed meant that they should be open to one another. I believe that if there is integrity, if the man has nothing to hide and the woman has nothing to hide, both of them will be naked and they will not be ashamed. So once there is integrity in the home. 
once there's nothing the man is doing that he wouldn't like the woman to know, and there's, some, there's nothing the woman is doing that he wouldn't like the man to know, obviously there will be openness and both of them could be naked and they will not be ashamed. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Then, uh, what can be done? Uh, it is the problem of the English or the way we wrote. What can be done to the man you are led to to by God or this is what this person wants to say. What can be done um, when the man you are led by God to marry is not ready to settle down because uh, because of finances and the care of you and you as a lady is very much ready uh, what can the lady do in this situation? Eh? You should pray. Praise the Lord. <laughs> okay, this is um, how do you undo a situation where your husband is more sanguine in nature and makes a joke of everything and you tell and you tell he is taking life too easy. The issue of uh, the lady is ready and uh, the brother is not ready. Well, he should pray. We agree. But in terms for during courtship, issues are to be discussed. And one of the key issues that to be discussed has to do with finance, because the lady mentioned the issue of finance. Their future is at stake here in marriage. Their life is involved. And uh, it is good they start on the right footing, spiritually, physically, financially. And I believe that is one of the reasons why in marriage counseling, they encourage the man to at least have a, a job. And if the man is not having a job and the sister is having a job, there should be discussion and agreement. Because we have seen issues, the man say, okay, where well, I will take care. But by the time the marriage is consummated, six months down the line, we know what has happened. So, apart from prayer, it should be discussed. The two of them should be able to agree. Why are you not ready? The man has said, well, my finance. If the other party said, okay, I have enough finance. I mean, such issues should be discussed during marriage counseling uh, process and documented. Because there's a limit to which a woman can carry the responsibility of the family. And that is the truth. So it's not that I'm ready, I'm ready. Well, you are ready. Two months, if there's no enough money to run the family, all this ready, 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 there will be a referral gear. And it will start by nagging, complaining, and all that. So I believe Beyond prayers, issue must be discussed and trashed out very well. Uh, there are some instances, parents will say, okay, go ahead and marry. We will be responsible for your upkeep. I mean, we have issues like that, but uh, those are exceptions. Okay, sir. Okay, ma'am. Praise the Lord. There are four different type personality types, and it is important for you to know your husband's personality type or your wife's personality type because it will help you in every area of the relationship. For example, the sanguine, they are pleasure-seeking people, and they are normally referred to as the talkers. So they have their strengths and they have their weaknesses. Where there are strengths, then those are supposed to be opportunities. 
Where there are weaknesses, then you try to manage those areas. But if you don't know his personality type, then there will be many conflicts in the relationship. And because his personality type will be different from your own many times, there is no need to compare your spouse with another person. Because there is no personality type that is better than the other one. That somebody is a choleric, is a go-getter, go uh, a good driver, does not mean that he's better than the sanguine. Praise God. Even the Bible says that they that compare themselves with themselves, they are fools. Okay, praise the Lord. Um, is it not, uh, is it right for a married couple to be locking their phones? to prevent one another from assessing. No, it's not right. It's not right. It's not right. Praise the Lord. Um, in the case we are by communication is lacking, what can one do? In the case we are by communication is lacking, what can one do? Pastor Lurumbi? You preach on communication. In the case whereby communication is lacking, one can one do. Find out reason why communication is lacking. Is it from you or from the other party? I think that is important. I, I don't see that really as a, a question. If it's lacking, is it from both of Communication is part of married relationship. Communication is what makes married relationship to work, to be sweet, to be enjoyable. Communication is like a mortar that join the, the, the blocks together to make it strong. It's a lubricant in the wheel, in the crown that made the, fun the vehicle to function. Without communication, there is no good married relationship. But you see, there are some of these questions that I believe people should come around for counseling. For counseling. Yes, yeah. some of the questions I see that they are a Yeah, yeah, yeah. More yeah. than that. Sure. Yeah, people should please sure. be open. Like somebody sure. said, uh, uh, I'm ready, the other is not part. Have they seen the pastor? Have they seen the married counselors? Have they taken any step? Or you are not ready, the man is not ready. Have you seen the pastor? Have you discussed with the pastor? Have you seen the marriage counseling team? Have you initiated the process? I mean, these are issues. Before Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Praise God. Uh, I think Pastor Luron B did summarize everything properly. A lot of us don't care about counseling. And we don't go to our pastors and make use of their offices. Part of the job description of a pastor is not, practi is not practiced here in this local church. Many of you don't approach any pastor for any reason. You just believe in one man coming to the pulpit and preaching, and then that is all you need. But that's not all that is the churches. That's the office of the pastor. The office of the pastor is supposed to find time to listen to you. Some of our pastors here don't have work to do. And that's true. There is no day that you ask some of us, oh, can I see you? I mean, like Reverend Fulani here, I thank God for him, I and mean, I can testify about him. There is no time you come to this place that you won't find him. But if you don't ask him a question, how will he answer your question? If you don't ask him for counsel, how will he ask, ask, answer your counsel? If you are going about other churches, and you are totally telling other pastors your problems, how can they know your problem in your own local church? <laughs> so... I think we should adjust those sites. I mean, that's just the comment I have 
on many of these uh, issues. Please, can the choir come up? Uh, can we all rise up and just sing a little bit? I don't know whether you know some of the old songs that we used to sing. I'm married to Jesus, Satan leave me alone. I'm married to Jesus, Satan leave me alone. My husband is coming to take me away. To everlasting home. Hallelujah. I'm married to Jesus, Satan leave me alone. To take me away to everlasting home. Hallelujah. Married to Jesus, Satan, leave me alone. I'm married to Jesus, Satan, leave me alone. My husband is coming to take me away to before the Almighty, we humble ourselves before the throne of the living God. We say, Lord, we are but dust and ashes. Lord, we ask that in this hour, you will help us to correct foundations. The foundation of marriage, the foundation of courtship, 
foundation of all the problems we have raised. Help us to repair our lives that we will function properly. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone said amen. Um, let me first of all thank the church for reminding us that we're a local church and um, the fact that we should visit the matter of marriage much more often. Because a local church is a place where there are many things to say. Uh, within the time that I have today, I will try as much as possible to be brief. But you may have to listen to the message again. Because if you hear me once, you may not understand some of the things that I'm going to say today. Because I'm going to be very, uh, I'm going to put on my apostolic cap uh, to talk to the church. So God will bless you in the name of Jesus. Uh, but the first thing I want to address uh, was the first question or one of the first questions about conflict in marriage. Number one. If you marry a non-believer, you will have conflict. If you marry a non-believer, you will have what? Conflict. You will have sorrow. Number two, if you are equally yoked together, even with a believer, for instance, he goes to apostolic faith, you go to the apostolic church. He goes to deeper life and you go to winners. You go to winners and he goes to whatever is his church. And your pastors are teaching you different things. And you believe both believe different things. And you marry. You will have some little conflict. Number three. If a Christian is carnal, there will be conflict. If you are carnally minded, you will have conflict. Number four, ignorance will cause conflict. Ignorance will cause conflict. That means you lack knowledge. So ignorance will cause conflict. So let me end that one that way. Number two, somebody asked about a dog. That the husband is rearing a dog. And she doesn't like dogs. Well, if I were to answer you privately, but because you asked the question publicly, I will answer publicly. And the question is, is everything you do that your husband too loves? That brings in the scripture to bear with one another. To tolerate one another. That's what is written in all the scripture. One another. One another. That's church. So you tolerate the other person as long as it is not a matter of sin. As long as it is not a matter of character flaws. If the dog is causing you sickness and disease, I'm certain that your husband we, re we respond. If he's a Christian, if he's a born again believer, if they are born again and the dog is causing sickness or disease or harm, then I'm sure your husband will, will listen. But the greatest question is, is everything you do that your husband likes? If your husband tolerates you, why don't you also tolerate your husband? That's love. That's what is called love. That's the love of God. Uh, then somebody talked about listening. Somebody talked about listening. And one of our elders mentioned that we have two ears and one mouth. And he also said it is both, which I agree with. 
But the other aspect is attitude, which I'm going to address in my message. Attitude. They are shaped by the word of God. So where your husband or your wife is lacking in understanding of the word of God, all these sanguine, whatever they have read those books. I'm sorry, they are useless. Let your, your, your husband be Christ-like. Let them be like Jesus. Let them study the Bible and be like Jesus. Let them be Christ-like. Let them carry the character of Christ. Then they will, they will, they will, they will be responsible. If you are a wife you, and you are the bride of Christ and you study what the bride of Christ looks like in the Bible, then you translate it to the physical level. So, lack of proper scriptural instruction is most of the time that is the palaver. Now, also the issue of somebody keeping quiet, another person talking. Um, when I was growing up as a minister, as a young pastor, I listened to a group of people who talk biblically about prayer counseling. That's a technique of helping somebody to get healed. And even last week, I still encountered such a problem. A man had a lot of problems in his family, and he took a particular attitude. But that attitude now has borne fruit, and the fruit has become a seed, and the seed has become a tree. I'm trying to manage it. But where do I come in? He will have to suffer for some time to recover. When he recovers, he will learn a lesson. If he learns a lesson. So that's the way life is. The best thing is to make sure you have a sound foundation. Which I'm sure many of us do not have. And it is the fault of us preachers. It is the fault of parents. That they didn't lay a foundation for their children when they were born. Because they themselves were ignorant. Alright. Um, somebody talked about integrity in marriage. I will deal with that later. Uh, then somebody talked about uh, I think I will deal with that later too. Um, church the Lord will bless you today in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I didn't hear your amen. amen. All right, let me spend maybe uh, possibly 45 to 50 minutes. Uh, by the grace of God, I'll be done. But please, like I said, um, it is not everything that I say that I'll be able to explain. You might have to see me privately um, because of that. Uh, not only that, I've written a book about marriage. Marriage is a great mystery. And so this morning, I'm going to talk about the mystery of marriage. Praise God. Can you say it with me? The mystery of marriage. The mystery of marriage. That's what I want to talk about uh, to the church. And uh, I pray this message goes to many places. Because I have, I mean, of course you know that I'm, uh, by the grace of God, I didn't just believe the gospel yesterday. And that I also have been taught by other pastors. I've been taught by other leaders. So what I want to say today is not taught me by any pastor, any leader. But Jesus Christ taught me. And the Holy Ghost taught me. 
And so I want to share with you with all my heart. I pray that our lives will be corrected. And we will go well in the name of Jesus Christ. Let's go to the regular passages of the Bible. In Genesis chapter 2. Let's start from Genesis chapter 2. Please pay attention as I try to go through uh, these things rapidly. In Genesis chapter 2, verse 22. It says, then, the rib which the Lord God had taken from the man, he made into a woman, and he brought her to the man. And Adam said, this is now bone of my bones, and flesh of my flesh, she shall be called woman, because she was taken out of man. Therefore, shall a man leave his father and mother, and be joined to his wife, and the and they shall become one flesh. And they both were naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. So you see that everything here started from God. God made the man. So God is the head of the man. And Christ is the head of the man. And the man is the head of the woman. Before you begin to talk about angels. And so you see that there is a coming down of relationship, of instruction, of understanding that the man has a major role to play in a marriage. Husband and wife. So I'll be talking back and forth. For those of you that are single and for those of you that are married, I'll be talking back and forth so that everybody can be included in the message. Now, so you see that parents are involved in bringing up a child. A man shall leave father and mother and join his wife. And the two of them becoming one flesh. So they will have learned. That's what the Bible assumes. That's what God assumes. That they have a father and they have a mother. And that the father and the mother will help raise the child. So, here is where we have the snake in the garden. The snake comes into the garden to cause divorce so that a child will no longer have a father and so that a child will no longer have a mother. So, a snake comes in to poison the husband, poison the wife, they divorce, and the children are parentless. And so, the parents don't get any instruction from the uh, from the, uh, the the children don't get any instruction from the parents to be able to live a godly life, and that begins all the trouble, that begins all the problem because of uh, the instruction that should be foundational in the life of children that had not been provided. Let me quickly say this: that you can teach your children Bible. But let them hold the word of God in a sacred manner. If they don't do that, they will go out, you think they know the Bible, they will make the same mistakes that you hope they will not have made. So it's a big responsibility to be married. Praise God. All right, go with me to Songs of Solomon, where we are going to stay for most of the day. Songs of Solomon, chapter 1, verse 1 to 4. Songs of Solomon. Now, uh, that book <laughs> is, is very interesting. And we shall look at a few verses today. Most preachers do not open Songs of Solomon. But it's the love book. It's the book that talks about love. And marriage is about love. The church is about love. So in Songs of Solomon chapter 1, in verse 1, the song, of, the song of songs, which is Solomon's. Verse 2, let him kiss me with the kisses of his mouth, for your love is better than wine, because the fragrance of your good ointments your name is ointment poured forth. Therefore, 
The virgins love you. Verse 4. Draw me away. We will run after you. The king has brought me into his chambers. We will be glad and rejoice in you. We will remember your love more than wine. Rightly do they love you. Now that's deep. And that is fundamental to marriage. That is important to marriage. Now let's go read Apostle Paul in Ephesians chapter 4 or Ephesians chapter 5, reading in verse 22. I believe it's at verse 22 that we have to start. Ephesians chapter 5 at verse 22. Wives, submit yourselves or your, to submit to your own husbands as unto the Lord. Now, so you can see, as I have read now, that verse should trigger an alarm in your spirit. That verse should trigger something if you are reading in the Holy Spirit. It should trigger immediately, oh, oh, oh. So, a wife and husband relationship is related to the Lord. So, my relationship to my wife is as like as my relationship to my husband. So that should trigger an alarm immediately because you now compares it with your relationship to the Lord. In other words, marriage is the closest description on the earth of the life in heaven. So if your marriage is poisoned, I pray God will throw in sugar today. I pray that God will remove the poison in the name of Jesus. Now, so if I begin to interpret, we won't live here. So let me just read. <laughs> Praise God. Verse 23, for the husband is the head of the wife as also Christ. So you see again, as also Christ is the head of the church and he is the savior of the body. So you see? It's, busy, there, it's going back and forth to show you the mystery of marriage. That marriage is not just about sleeping and having a child. Marriage is not just about finances. Marriage is not just about quarreling about which house are we going to live. Marriage is not all about that. Those are the outworking of our relationship with heaven. And when you have no relationship with heaven, and you want to do and practice the mystery of heaven, you are lost. You want to do what is in heaven, and you are not related to heaven, and you have no instruction from heaven, and now you want to practice the mystery of heaven on earth. And then you say, well, what's this man talking about? I'm talking about marriage. I'm telling you that marriage is more than just getting a woman into your house, or getting a man to marry, emergency man to marry. Because you are marrying late. That's not about marriage. The marriage is related to the relationship between the body of Christ and Jesus. The church is the bride. The Christ is the bridegroom. Praise God. I said praise God. Verse number 25. Husbands, love your wives. You see what I said? That's where love is central. And then the Bible says that God himself is love. Not that what love is God and God is love. So you have to understand what love do I have for this man or this woman before I marry her. Now, quickly to say that in the Greek language, there are three words for love. The first Greek word is eros. That is erotic. That is the English word from where we get erotic. Then there is the word phileo. Phileo is the word we said, I like you. Agape is the one in 1 Corinthians 13. That is the true love of God. That love that can die for the other partner physically. So when you say, do you take this man to be your wedded wife? Till death do you part? Now that's a hard question. And you say, yeah, yeah. And then after two years, then you divorce. 
You mean you didn't understand what vow you were taking? That they were asking you if you love this woman to be willing to give your kidney. You have two kidneys and her kidney is packing up. And the doctor said we need another kidney. Can you give your own kidney? And you say you are not ready. They call your children. The children said you are not ready. So what do we do? Oh, let's buy another kidney somewhere. Praise God. So the matter of marriage is not just to take it lightly. We should weigh the matter as an issue. That's why I sang the song that Jesus is my husband. That's why I sang the song, My Lifetime. So what I'm saying has meaning. Now, so in verse 25, husband loves your wives as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her. Verse 26, he, that he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of water by the word. Verse 27, that he might present her to himself, a glorious church. So, a husband is to so treat the wife that the wife is presentable to him. Not presentable to the pastor. So when a woman gets dressed up and is presentable to the world, but not presentable to the, hus uh, to the husband, that already is conflict. So, that he might present her a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that she should be holy and without blemish. That's the foundation. That's the foundation. We read this passage every time in the church. Every marriage, marriage meeting, we read these same scriptures. But the understanding is lacking to those of us that come to a marriage ceremony and then we don't understand what has been read. In verse 28, so husbands ought to love their wives as, as, uh, uh, their, wives as their own bodies, as their own bodies. And he who loves his wife loves himself. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. I'm going to talk more about that when it comes to sex. Because there are what preachers don't talk about in the pulpit. They say he that loves his wife loves himself. You see that? For no man yet had hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it, just as the Lord does the church. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. Talking about Jesus. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. And he said, this is a great misery. But I speak concerning Christ and the church. And he's telling you all along, as the Lord, as the Lord, telling you that all that I have said, he is comparing marriage and the relationship between Christ and the church. I laid my life down for the church. Can you, husband, lay your life down for your wife? That's what I've just read to you in simple English. In verse 32. So many of the debates, brethren, when you have understanding, are unnecessary. They are just human, what I'm going to describe and give you what the body parts of a woman means. Her legs, her lips, her ears, her eyes, her breast. What do they mean? That is important. Because when you understand that, then you understand why Jesus laid down his life for the church. In verse number 32, this is a great misery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Verse 33, nevertheless, let each one of you in particular so love his own wife as himself, and let the wife see that she respects or reference her husband. So you see the conclusion is that, Lord, okay, let me boil down and go back to marriage. And so I'm talking about marriage now, that the key to marriage is love and respect. Those are the two keys. Love 
and respect, love and reverence for each other. And so he tells you very basically what marriage is all about. Now, let me uh, end that and then go a little further. Let's begin from the foundation. Let's begin from the beginning. Number one, uh, we have to understand some scriptures. Uh, when the Bible talks about the fruit, I mean the tree of life and death in the Old Testament, that's in Genesis, that, you know, Adam and Eve ate of that fruit, and then uh, things began to scatter from that, that point. But God did not allow them to touch the tree of life. Because if they have eaten of the tree of life, they will be irredeemable. They could no longer be saved in their backsliding state. So man will no longer be, be able to get saved. Now when we are born again, it is this fruit of the tree of life that we eat. When you say a person is born again. It is the resurrection life in Jesus that we get. And this is the fruit of this tree that Genesis talk about. Praise God. I say praise God. Now let's look at a few scriptures in, in Proverbs chapter 3. Proverbs chapter 3. Proverbs chapter 3. I'm reading verse 18. Proverbs chapter 3 verse 18. It says, she is a tree of life. Talking about wisdom. Ah, may God grant us wisdom. I said, may God grant us wisdom. We Africans are always for power. We are not for wisdom. The other day, <laughs> a friend of mine wrote me and he said, the first Nigerian who became a parliamentarian in England, and I, I saw in 2018 when she won the election. 37-year-old, a lawyer. First, of course, born in the country, then became a parliamentarian. And every, all Nigerians were circulating a photograph all over UK, into Nigeria. The poor, praise God, this woman won something. I'm talking about wisdom. But 2020, she is no longer a member of the parliament and she is no longer even a lawyer. Because of lack of wisdom. She had power. But she didn't have wisdom. She won an election. And so she had power. But no wisdom. She was driving on a highway. And instead of 30 kilometers per hour in that section of town, she was doing 41. And the camera caught her. And they got to court. She lied. She said she was not the one driving. That it was her brother that was driving. When the matter got between her and the brother, oh, they lied. And they said it was somebody else. and gave another name. And they traced that man at the time the offense happened that the man was in Russia. He wasn't in England. So they found both of them liars and they sent both of them to prison. And then the law council, like our NBA here, called the woman and said, The woman, why did you, why did all this happen? She still lied. And they said, Well, a solicitor cannot be like this and remain a solicitor. So we are taking your license as a lawyer. So she lost because of lack of wisdom. She lied. When you lie, you don't have wisdom. Praise God. That's what I'm talking about. That's what you talk here in verse 18. It says she is a tree of life to those that take hold of her and happy are all who retain her. That's wisdom. In verse 19, the Lord by wisdom founded the earth. Can you see that? The Lord by wisdom founded the earth. By understanding he established the heavens. Can you see that? Praise God. In Proverbs 11.30 Proverbs 11.30. Where am I going with all the scriptures I'm reading? Be born again. Be born again. Before you think about marriage, be born of God. Be born again. 
Let there be a transformation. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. This new creation is the bride of Christ. This new creation is the wife of heaven. This new creation is the one that God says is the bride of Jesus. So that's where I'm going with all the scriptures I'm reading. When it says that when you have wisdom, you get the, the fruit of the tree of life. Now, number two, Proverbs 11 verse 30. It says, he that winneth, uh, is, no, sorry, Proverbs 11 30. It said, the fruit of righteousness is a tree of life. And he who wins souls is wise. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. The fruit of the righteous is a tree of what? Of life. And he that what? Winner souls is wise. Do you connect the two? Praise God. Do you connect the two? Hello. I said, do you connect the two? He said, the fruit of the righteous is what? So what does the tree of life produce? What does the tree of life produce? Life. The tree of life. So, the tree of life produces life. So, when you go preach to somebody, you transfer the life. If you are married, you have not born again, you transfer death to your children. Understand that? So, when you are not born of God, then you transfer death to your children. That is why the children that are born, after you are born again, are less troublesome than the children you gave birth to before you were born again. The children you gave birth to and you are not born again will be more difficult to handle than those ones you gave birth to while you are a child of God. Why? Because it's a trans sex is a transference of spirits. And so when your spirit is wrong, and you transfer to another woman whose spirit is wrong. The product, the DNA of that child is not born again. And so you have to make an effort for that person to be born again. Sorry, are you hearing what I'm talking about? Sorry, are you with me? Church, can you raise your hand if you are with me? You understand what I'm saying? These are the intricacies of the matter. And I can't hide today. I know many of these things for a long time, but... When I hear two people arguing about something, and they are talking about the shoe of a woman, the shoe somebody wears, and all that, I just go my other way. Because if I talk to them, I will be like a useless person. Because they can't understand what I'm saying. Neither do I understand what they are saying. So I go my other way to another place. Praise God. Because it's not that I'm super spiritual. It's because they are not relating physical things to spiritual things. They don't know that it is the spiritual that produces the physical. And so they want to hold the physical in isolation. And then deal with the spiritual in isolation. They don't marry the two together. And so some people say they are secular. And others say they, say they are spiritual. Uh, they say my Lord tempora. My Lord tem tem spiritual. That's what they say in the law court, Abi. But then they, they, all those things are nonsense. How can you judge between two people and you don't have a spiritual sense that you are moral, that this man is wrong, this one is, is right? There has to be some spirituality for a judge to take a good decision in a matter. So it's not a matter of Lord temporal, Lord the spiritual. I pray God will deliver us from error in the name of Jesus Christ. In chapter 13 of Proverbs, verse, verse 12. Chapter 13, verse 12. Now, it will shock you. That from the book of Genesis to Proverbs, they don't talk about the tree of life. Then they'll find the tree of life in Genesis. From here, you then go to Genesis before you see that phrase. Now, Proverbs 13, verse 12. Sorry, are you going home? Sorry, can we all read it together? Oh, I'm sorry, just read it from your Bible. But let the rest of us who can read here read this one. Hope deferred makes the heart sick. But when desire cometh, it's what? I said it's what? It's a tree of life. That's what it says there. And so he says, hope deferred makes the heart sick. But when the desire comes, it is what? 
a tree of life. In other words, you are praying about something. When you have resolved, lower, lower by it, that you can handle it, that is a tree of life. You are excited. You give testimony. I was looking for 10,000 naira. Look at the 10,000 naira. I prayed yesterday night. Here it is. It came forth. That is a tree of life. Next time, you remind God. Ha! The other time I prayed, you answered my prayer. With that tree of life, you are able to generate another life. Can you say amen to that? So that's the nature of being born again. That's what I'm talking about. So if you are not born again, and then you're going into marriage, then you don't understand the manufacturer. Then you don't understand the creator who manufactured marriage. And so you can't be talking about your fathers and your mothers who are in idolatry. And who are sinning and worshipping Obantala and the Ogun and all those things. And those things were the things they were worshipping, sacrificing their children to those things. And then you are going back and you are using a Yoruba parables to describe Bible. Sometimes I'm very sad. Because with, uh, those of us who are even preaching make the mistake of relating heavenly things to some earthly, I don't mean that Yoruba parables are totally bad. But there are some of them that are not applicable. Praise God. I said praise God. Now, in Proverbs 15, verse, verse number 4, I'm still dealing with being born again. Let me stress that over and over again. If you are not born again and you want to go into marriage, it is a little difficult. Very difficult. In verse 4, a wholesome tongue is what? Hey, read it aloud. Please shout it anywhere you are. Say it again loud, loud. Somebody talk about communication here yesterday. This is it. This is it. Can you read again, first man? How does the New Testament say it? Do anybody remember? Let your speech be seasoned with grace. He said, my husband doesn't understand me. My wife doesn't understand me. Oh, there is this one between us. What did you say? Praise God. Sorry, are you with me? This is the cure. A wholesome tongue. You know what? A perfect tongue. A tongue that is healed by the tree of life. We produce life, but perverseness therein is a breach of the spirit. You understand grammar? A breach of the spirit. You know that was, you know, you have a dam that has a barrier for water. Are you with me? Or as a child, have you not done it before? Rain is falling, and you run outside, and you are running, and then you gather sand in order to block Agbara Odo, and the water is running, and say, I'm going to block it. Are you with me? And then you block it. And then when the rain is much, then your, <laughs> your, your dam is just washed away. It's breached. That's a breach. All right? If we come tomorrow, God forbid, or like it happened many years ago, God will not allow it to happen again. We came and found our generator house breached. In other words, somebody dug a hole behind and entered in order to steal generator. That's a breach. So, he says there that if the perverseness of the tongue causes a breach in the spirit. Praise God. But a wholesome tongue produces what? Eh? That's why some people divorce. Some women drove their husbands away. Some men drove their husbands away. Some fathers drove their children into adultery. Some, children, some fathers drove their children into the laps of a, a harlot because of what they were saying at home. And it happens in the church. Somebody in the choir, somebody among the women, somebody among the something. Look at some of the questions that some people ask. If you uh, have a private discussion with the pastor and then it becomes the talk of town. Well, that kind of thing. Well, we cannot defend us ourselves as pastors. But the fact of the matter is, did it happen? Then that is perverseness of the tongue. In other words, the pastor made a mistake. If there is love, 
the person who was injured will go to the pastor and say, Pastor, this, 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 this is what I told you, but I had it from this man, I had it from this lady, I had it from this lady. And the pastor will say, eh, is that so? Go and call the three of them. Because in Yoruba land, that's how to settle a matter. In Yoruba land, don't settle a matter behind the third party. Because he may be misrepresented. Are you with me? That's the lesson I learned as a pastor here. You don't solve a problem behind the third party or the second party. Go and call the other person eye to eye. Okay, tell me what you said the other time. Declare what you said. Then you know the truth of the matter. Is then you say, eh, 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 yes, sir. Ben yon koni mo se son. Bo ya ko yon ti mo son o yon yon ni. Then there are deniers. Then there are confirmations. Now that kind of thing. So when there is a perverseness of the tongue, we should want to it. And then the person who is offended will now also love and forgive. I said, Pastor, okay, no problem. If that was what happened, okay, that's all right. Um, well, I hope it doesn't happen again. Now, of course, the shame alone will make the, that pastor not to repeat such uh, perverseness. Are you with me? Can you say amen to that? So that's one of the things that we see that a wholesome tongue is what? Is what? Eh? Is what? It brings resurrection. It brings life. It produces the fruit of salvation. So when you are married, this is supposed to be the rule, the grand rule, the foundation in a home. If yours is not like that, I pray in the name that is above every name, it shall begin to be corrected. You will begin to learn wisdom. You will begin to learn how to address the other person. I mean, you can't address a wife, address your wife as if she is a, a cat or a dog or a goat. Bang, 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 every time, bang, 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 bang. No, that's not Christ, a Christian spirit. That spirit is not of Christ. Praise God. That's not the spirit of Christ. Ah. I hope I'm understood. <laughs> praise the Lord. I said praise the Lord. And so, the resurrection life that both a husband and wife have, they want to share with the children so that as they go into the world, they will be able to know omoto lekoile. Praise God. That's the other way I would say it in Yoruba. In other words, you have taught this child how to talk. You have taught this child how to carry out salvation, how to manifest salvation in the world so that the world can benefit from the child. Can you say amen to that? Now, so mistake number one is when you are not born again and you marry. That's mistake number one. I've already, already explained. It's a transfer of death. If you are born again, you marry an unborn again woman, well, your life will overcome the death in the other person. Right? But over time, that other person has to change. If the person that doesn't change, it will drown you and you will lose your life. That's why he said if a husband is not born again in 1 Corinthians, he said, well, why don't you stay with the husband because of your children? Because for your sake, your children are sanctified. Now that means that the, the, the children and the woman protects the family. But then that's not for long. The case will be reversed if it continues and on and on. Because evil communication corrupts what? Good manners. That's the way it works. So I'm praying that God will help you and I in the name of Jesus Christ. Mistake number two. When you are born again and you refuse to renew your mind. When you are born again and you refuse to renew your mind. So you transfer death to your husband or to your wife. Alright? And you are driven out of fellowship. And I've explained that a lot already. So it's important to renew our mind. Ha! Huh. May God help me today. Can you say amen to that? I say can you say amen to that? You see if a mind is not renewed. You will. Oh praise God. I said, praise God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You see, the man, inner man is renewed. Your innermost man is renewed. The real man is renewed. You are born again. 
You are complete in him. According to Colossians 2.10 or Colossians 3.10 or Ephesians chapter 4, verse 23, 24, you are complete in him, no doubt. But your mind is not complete. That is the battleground where the wisdom of the world, the custom of the world, the practices of the world will come into your head. As for the body, he does what is told. He has no choice. The spirit man is born again. But the brain, that's why I'm going to talk about the temple of a woman, his face. In Yoruba land, the singer says, Is that not what they sing? Yeah, so what's the meaning of that? So you have to understand that your mind is important. What you are thinking is important. And so it's either your mind will side with your spirit, that is born again, or your mind will side with your flesh that is not born again until resurrection. Praise God. Are you with me? Sorry, are you with me? So marriage, I'm so sorry. The reason, oh, praise God. Let me just tell you simply. The reason why it's very difficult to, for me to backslide in immorality is what I'm telling you now. I don't handle my marriage as if it is flesh and blood. At the same time, it's not that I don't love my wife in a practical way. Praise God. But I treat my wife as Christ. If my wife has a dream, I know the dream is for the church. Not for us. Because I treat her as comfort. I treat her, and that's her name. I treat her as the Holy Spirit. Praise God. So I take her seriously. If she has a dream... And he says, this, this, oh, I said, I know what you are talking about. You are talking about the church. That's what is wrong with the church. And it's accurate. It's not that I will come tomorrow and then it's missed. Of course, that's a gift. So understand what I'm saying, brothers and sisters. The Lord perfect our way in the name of Jesus Christ. I didn't hear your amen. Number, mistake number three is that you are married and you want to, or you want to marry, and you don't have resurrection life. You want to marry, or you have married, and you don't have resurrection life. I've told you the consequences. There will be transference of demons. Praise God. I told us in this audience, maybe you have forgotten Every man a woman sleeps with, he, the DNA of that man passes into the woman. Praise God. Are you with me? Every man you sleep with, the DNA of that man will pass to you. That's why it is good to be a virgin. And then marry your husband. Praise God. Then you marry your husband. It's a spiritual, that's what we call transference of spirits. If you marry a mommy water lady, you can be sure you are going to have sex with another person. And you are going to have sex with another person and another person. If a, a man goes into sex relationship outside of marriage with a mommy water man or a person that has a spiritual wife, and, or you have a spiritual husband, or you're having sex in your dream, and now you want to have sex in real life, those spirits that have been passed into you by those demons will also transfer to the person that you have sex with. Why? Because there's transference of spirits. Sex is more than a physical act. Hello? That's why Paul the Apostle said that he that sinned against his, he said, you commit fornication, you sin against your own body. In other words, you are defiled. In other words, you have another spirit. In other words, you are no longer whole. In other words, you are no longer sound. And so you even sin against your own body. I mean, when I know such information, of course... I mean, as a man, I run away from such a thing because I don't want to be contaminated. I'm praying you will not want to be contaminated. I didn't hear your amen about it. So if you are single, remain single until you, are, you can get married. God will grant you grace in the name of Jesus Christ. So it's like that. And so don't transfer HIV or gonorrhea or, or all those sexual diseases and sickness and disease to yourself by those kind of acts. That's a mistake. 
Praise God. I said praise God. So, what does all this mean? Parents, if they are ignorant of these things, if they are ignorant of these miseries, then they do not tell their daughters or tell their sons as these sons are growing up. So those sons have to go read books. So those sons have to go read Ikebe. Those sons have to watch an adultery film. Those sons have to go to the movie to go and learn the way of Hollywood. They have to go to the movie to go and learn the way of uh, Hollywood or Jollywood or whatever they call wood in Nigeria. That's what they call it. So they go